So you weren't worried? Yeah, I was worried. I was worried about my car payments <laughs> and Tim's business loan. I was worried about the widening crack in the pool and the new non-chlorinated filter that's still left in algae film. I was worried about my portfolio, even though my e-broker assured me that it was just first time investor jitters and that it was really much more profitable than a standard 401k. Okay, Aiden needed a math tutor. Jenna needed just the right Jamie Lynn Spears cleats for soccer camp. Um, Tim's parents were thinking about visiting for Christmas. My brother was back in rehab. Finley had worms. One of the fish had a fungus growing out of its left eye. Okay, these were just some of my worries. I had more than enough to keep me busy. Did you watch the news? Yeah, for about five minutes every day. Local headlines, sports, celebrity gossip. Why would I want to get depressed watching TV? I could do that just by stepping on the scale every morning. So what about other sources? Radio? My morning drive time? Oh, well, <laughs> that was my zen hour. After I dropped the kids off, I, I listened to Opie and Anthony. Their jokes helped me get through the day. What about the internet? What about it? <laughs> For me, it was shopping. For Jenna, it was homework. And for Tim, it was the stuff he kept on promising he'd never look at again. Okay, the only news that I ever saw was what popped up on my AOL welcome page. But at work, there had to be some discussion. Yeah, at first. It was kind of scary, kind of weird. I hear it's not really rabies, stuff like that. But then after the first winter, things died down, remember? Besides, it was a lot more fun to rehash last night's episode of Celebrity Fat Camp or, or bitch out whoever wasn't in the break room at the moment. Okay. One time, around March or April, I came into the office to find Mrs. Ruiz cleaning out her desk. I thought that she had been downsized or outsourced, you know? Something I considered a real threat. And she said it was them. And that's how she always referred to it, them or everything that's happening. She said that her family had already sold their home and that they were planning on buying a cabin up near Fort Yukon, Alaska. And I thought that that was the stupidest thing that I'd ever heard, especially from someone like Inez. She wasn't one of the ignorant ones. She was a clean Mexican. And I'm, I'm sorry to use that word, but that's how I thought back then. That's who I was. Did your husband show any concern? No. But the kids did. Not verbally or consciously, I think. Jenna got into fights. Aiden wouldn't go to sleep unless all the lights were on. Things like that. I don't think that they had any more information than Tim or I, but... Maybe they didn't have the adult distractions to block it out. So how did you and your husband respond? Zoloft and Ritalin SR for Aiden and Adderall XR for Jenna. <laughs> did the trick for a while. And the only thing that pissed me off was that the insurance didn't cover it because they were already on Phalanx. But how long have they been on Phalanx? Well, since it became available. We were all on Phalanx. Peace of Phalanx, peace of mind. That was our way of being prepared. That and uh, Tim buying a gun. He kept on promising to take me to the range to learn how to shoot it. Well, Sunday, he'd say, we're going this Sunday. But I knew he was full of it. Sundays were reserved for his mistress, that 18-foot twin-engine bitch he seemed to sink all of his love into. But I didn't care. We had our pills, and at least Tim knew how to use the Glock. It was a part of life, like smoke alarms or airbags. Maybe, maybe you think about it every once in a while, but it's 
always just, just in case. Besides, there was already so much out there to be worried about every month. Every month it seemed a new nail biter. How could you keep track of it all? How could you know which one is really real? How did you know? It had just gotten dark. The game was on. Tim was on the Barca lounger with the Corona. Aiden was on the floor playing with his ultimate soldiers. Jenna was in her room doing her homework and I was unloading the Maytag so I didn't hear Finley barking. Maybe I did, but no, I never gave it a second thought. Our house was in our community's last row at the foot of the hills. We lived in a quiet, just developed part of North County near San Diego. There was always a rabbit, sometimes a deer running across the lawn. Finley was always throwing a shit fit over something. I maybe glanced at the post-it note to get him one of those citronella bar colors. I don't remember when the other dog started barking or when I heard the car alarm go off down the street. It was when I heard something that sounded like a gunshot that I went into the den. Tim hadn't heard anything. No, he had the volume jacked up too high. I kept on telling him he needed to get his hearing checked. You just don't spend your 20s in a speed metal band and... <sighs> Aiden had heard something. He asked me what it was, and I was just about to tell him I didn't know when I saw his eyes go wide. He was looking past me at the glass sliding door that led to the backyard. I turned just in time to watch it shatter. It was, it was about 5'10", with slumped narrow shoulders and a puffy wagging belly. It wasn't wearing a shirt and its gray molted flesh was all torn and pockmarked. It smelled like the beach, like rotten kelp and salt water. Aiden jumped up and ran behind me, and Tim got up out of the chair and stood between us and the thing. In a split second, it was like all the lies fell away. Tim looked frantically around the room, looking for a weapon as it grabbed him by the shirt. They fell to the carpet, wrestling. He shouted for us to get to the bedroom, for me to get the gun. We were in the hallway when I heard Jenna screaming. I ran to her room, threw open the door, and another one, big, I'd say about 6'5", with huge shoulders and bulging arms, had broken the window, had Jenna by the hair, and she was screaming, Mommy! 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 What'd you do? Um, I'm not really sure. Every time I try to remember, things go by too fast. Uh, I had it by the neck as it pulled Jenna towards its open mouth. I squeezed, I mean I pulled hard. The kids say that I, I pulled the thing's head right off with all the flesh and muscle and whatever else hanging in tatters. I, I don't think that's possible. I mean maybe with, with all the adrenaline. <laughs> I just think the kids have it built up in their memories over the years making me into a She-Hulk or something. I know I freed Jenna. I remember that. And a second later, Tim came into the room with thick black goo over his shirt. He had the gun in one hand, Finley's leash in the other. He threw me the car keys, told me to get the kids to the Suburban. He ran to the backyard as we headed for the garage. I heard his gun go off as I started the engine. 